this video, I will be mentioning two facts which aim to expose the objectives of the Zionist racist authorities of this state, the corrupt state of Israel, which will have the net effect, it will have the net effect of showing the manipulative nature, okay, exposing the manipulative nature of those individuals who are ruling elites in Israel and even those before them, before Israel became even a state. But before I do so, I just want to say a word of cur on current events. What we're seeing today, ladies and gentlemen, in Sheikh Jarrah, in East Jerusalem, is merely a continuation. It is merely a continuation of a system or an objective that Zionists had from the inception of Israel and even before that. Of a, of a process of ethnic cleansing, which has been exposed in historical works through things like Plan Dalit. And I've spoken before about the work that Ilan Pape has done and others on exposing this, and Norman Finkelstein, on exposing this. Because the fact of the matter is this, the Zionists have been open, candid about their racial preferences and the fact that they do believe in racial inequality in terms of privileging one set of people, ethnic people over another. This is very clear in the in their works and in their statements. Aya King, what, the mayor of East Jerusalem, has spoken just recently about this, stating, quote, something to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing, that the, 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 the evictions in, in Sheikh Jarrah are part of a broader policy of installing layers, he says, installing layers of Jewish people in the area. It's an open secret. And that is why anyone, anyone who endorses or acts as an apologist for the state, the corrupt state of Israel and their actions, should be questioned or even accused of being a racist in much the same way as someone would be had they been a supporter of the apartheid state of South Africa. There's practically no difference between the two sets of policies. So that is a word on current events. The two points I wanted to make in this video. Number one, did you know? Did you know that the Irgun, which was a paramilitary group, which was responsible for killing civilians directly, okay, killing civilians directly, and the most famous terrorist attack was the one in King David Hotel in 1946, where over 90 people were killed. Civilians, British civilians, Palestinian civilians were killed. That those individuals who then became part of the framework, by the way, of the Lukid party that we see today, that those individuals, that those individuals actually had deals with Hitler and the Nazis. And this is something which is not a conspiracy. This is not conspiratorial. This is something which people, Western academics have been highlighting they have been highlighting this point in peer-reviewed academic journals using source material, primary source material to justify their points. Because why? the question is, why would they do that? Why would the Irgun, who are meant to be a paramilitary Jewish nationalistic kind of group, side with the Nazis? Because this, they had the same objectives and this gives us something about the way these people operates they are completely machiavellian meaning they are consequentialist in their ethical reasoning meaning that means always justify the ends for them and that's why we're seeing bombs being dropped the most sophisticated and technologically advanced bombs being dropped on the most densely and defenseless densely populated and defenseless area in uh, in, in the whole middle east probably which is the Gaza, uh, the Gaza Strip, the Strip. Because the ends always justify the means for them. They know that if you, if you drop a bomb, 30 to 40% chance is going to be a child. And the rest is probably going to be some kind of civilian. You've got a 2 or 3% chance of hitting who you 
the, the, the so-called target that you want to hit. But you don't mind killing children because you are terrorists. And the ends always justify the means for you are scoundrels, weasels, cowards, criminals. You are diabolical. Your actions are condemnable. You are megalomaniacal. You are pitiful people. Pip squeaks. All of you are pip squeaks. You remind me of the verse in the Quran where ironically it speaks about Banu Nadir, another treacherous cri tribe at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in chapter 59 of the Quran where it says, لا يقاتلونكم جميعا إلا في قرى محصنة أو من وراء جدر. They don't fight you together except from behind in fortified in fortified places or behind big walls. You pathetic, cowardly people. You don't like face to face confrontation. You don't like equal fights because you are cowardly. It doesn't take a brave person to press a button. It doesn't take a brave person to, throw, to play computer games with a drone and kill a child. It doesn't take a brave person to press a button from a high place where you know that there's not going to be a reaction. You pathetic, weak weasels. Fighting children for a living. That's what you basically do. You fight children. You kill children for a living. That's your, that is the bulk of what you do, you pathetic weasels. And you do so in the in the name of defense. Defending yourself against what? Defend yourself against someone your own size. You pathetic people. The second point which I wanted to make. So the first point we've just explained. That they were in cahoots with the, with, with, with the Nazis. And this shows you the Machiavellian nature of these individuals. Number two is that did you know that Israel funded Hamas? In 1987, Israel funded Hamas. Now look at them. The two major antagonists of the, uh, uh, of the Zionist project. Nazism, actually you could argue Nazism helped the Zionist project. As we've just, in a sense, they had the same objectives. Get them out of Europe. The Jewish problem, they didn't mind being servile to the European, the white man. So long as that they were, they, they were dominant. These Zionists I'm talking about, they were dominant in another land, which is not their own. And they couldn't even fight for it themselves. The pathetic weasels, the cowards. They needed the Britishers and the UN and all these other foreign agencies, America and so on, to fight their battles for them. They didn't fight those battles themselves. The only people they love killing is civilians and, and children. That's, that's who you've got racked up in your record. Civilians and children. That's what you're known for. Terrorists. The second thing is that you funded Hamas. Now, why would you fund Hamas in 1987? This is an open secret. This is an open secret. You can go ahead and look at, for example, Cohen. I think his name is uh, Ave Cohen, who was an advisor. He was an advisor to the Israeli government, and he's also a historian. And he says quite candidly that, yes, they funded Israel, funded Hamas. And the reason why they funded Hamas is because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that's always been your motto, you pathetic people. You, are, you, don't, you don't have principles. All it is is anything that can enhance your uh, objectives of racial superiority, you take it. You funded Hamas because the PLO was your enemy. And this is what he says. Go ahead. Why were they your enemies? They were your enemies because they were the biggest thorn in your side. But then you created, he says, we created a monster. Yeah, because at that time... The narrative was against Arab nationalism. Now all of a sudden, sudden it's about Islamic terrorism. But the same things were happening all along. You, can't, you cannot blame Islamic radicalism when the same things you were doing to Arab nationalists, secularists. It's not a matter of Arab nationalism or Islamism. It's a matter of resistance. And what you have done is you've tried to pick on the weakest part of the enemy because you're pathetic people you are pathetic people you are weak cowardly people you are and you know it you only fight people that can't fight back 
cowardly people. The IDF, the most cowardly, uh, Jaysh, the most cowardly, the most weak, the most pathetic army known to humankind. I don't know of anyone who's done that. They, they just make their target civilians all the time. Except for the Islamic terrorist groups which you'd like to condemn. But you're practically the same in your operations. You're practically the same. What's the difference? Tell me the difference. They bomb civilians, you bomb civilians. Densely popular. If this were, if, if, if you were Muslims, everyone would say this is Islamic radicalism. No one would accept it. But you are pathetic people. And the fact that you've been trying your hand at narrative manipulation is very clear. Because your Machiavellian efforts to try and be in cahoots with the, with the Nazi party and also with Hamas show me that you know you don't really have ethics. It's all about how do we establish authority, okay? How do we establish authority as a racial elite? And that's all. And these facts expose you as individuals who are just trying to clutch at straws and manipulate narratives in order to expand your own project of racial superiority because you, you feel maybe uh, downtrodden, you feel subservient, you feel second class and you, you are basically the bully. You are basically the bully that wants to bully now. You've been bullied for all this time and now you want to bully, yeah? You've been bullied for all this time, now it's your turn to bully. It's a classic case. And you're pathetic. And you're basically acting just like the Nazis. You're acting like them. Simple as that. You're doing as much as you can get away with. And we know that you're doing just as much as you can get away with. If you could put these guys in gas chambers, you do it. If you could drop a nuclear bomb, you do it. But you know the international community couldn't accept this. So you're doing as much as is possible. You're pathetic. You're weasels. You're cowards. And you know it. You know it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa